Hey guys, Clay here, and this is Technically Awesome, where you learn how to have awesome technique and become technically awesome. This is part one of a series of the three things you've got to know to start learning the bass. So whether you've been playing for years or you're just starting out, you'll no doubt find a few tips and tricks and things that'll help you get extra speed, stability, less fatigue and less RSI issues. So it's time to work on your setup and technique and today it's all about your body position. So grab your bass and let's get playing. <laughs> Okay guys, so the first thing you want to have sorted when you start playing the bass is how to actually hold the bass correctly. It sounds pretty straightforward, but the way you hold the bass and how you position it in relation to your body makes a huge difference. Firstly, you want to have your arms fairly evenly spaced either side of your body. A bit like you're a puppet and your arms are hanging on strings. Kind of like these guys, but you know, with basses. The classic mistake I see nearly every beginner do is pick up their bass and stare straight down at their right hand. This will make your left hand feel miles away and turn your right arm into a chicken wing. Remember, there are only four things that your right hand has to do and that's play one of the four strings. Whereas your left hand has over 20 notes on each string with four fingers that you can play them with. So your attention needs to be on your left hand and not your right. The other problem is this creates the number one thing we want to try to avoid in our setup and that's too many angles. Our fingers move fastest when our fingers and forearms are nice and straight in a neutral position. This means that our muscles and tendons are in a relaxed position and not pre-flexed or stretched before you start playing. You never see an awesome bass player or guitarist staring at their right hand when they play. Their eyes are always fixed either on their left hand or not looking at all. So, you need to give your right arm some room and get yourself closer to your left hand. To do this, you need to be positioned in the middle of your base, which is marked by the double dots at the 12th fret of the neck. I will generally lean my body position a little to my left, so my head is around the middle of the neck. Then my arms are far more evenly spaced either side of my body. And best of all, I can get rid of all those angles in my arms. A good way to check for yourself if you've got this correct is to ask yourself, can I draw a straight line from my fingers to my elbow? If so, then you're giving yourself the best chance you can at being able to play fast because you're getting your muscles and tendons into, again, a relaxed and neutral position. This will also mean less fatigue and pain in your joints, which can lead to conditions like RSI and carpal tunnel syndrome. The next thing you want to make sure you do is to give the neck of your base a tilt upwards with at least a 10 degree angle as this puts far less stress on your left hand by also reducing the angles in the left wrist. Also, if you're playing sitting down, make sure your base is not leaning back as this makes it harder for your left hand to reach around the neck as well. Make sure it's perfectly vertical as it would be as if you were playing standing up. And that's pretty much the basics on how to hold your base correctly. So, just to recap the main points, sit towards the center of your base at the 12th fret. Ask yourself, can I draw a line from my fingers to my elbow, particularly in the right arm? Add at least a 10 degree angle of tilt to the neck of the base. Keep the body of your base vertical and not leaning back. And the number one thing to remember overall is just try to reduce the angles as much as possible. And that's it. Now I know you will no doubt see a lot of famous and great bass players using all sorts of techniques. From the vertical bass to the ultra low, you have to remember that sometimes this is done just as a type of look or just for the sake of energetic performance. It's good to know that just because a bass player is in a famous band, doesn't necessarily mean they have the best technique. It's always good to look at the bass players who have become legendary players of their bass playing alone. Guys like Victor Wooden and Jaco Pistorius. But feel free to try out any playing style you like. I know I have and this is what I have settled on as the most efficient and fastest style of playing for me. You may find your own style of playing that revolutionizes the way everybody else wants to play the bass going forward. The bass is still a very very relatively young instrument. So every decade you still see people refining the way it's played and taking the ceiling of playing higher and higher. So who knows? Try it all. Okay, now that you've got your body position sorted, it's time to move on to the next most important part of your setup and that's your right hand. So much of your tone and speed actually comes from your right hand. 
So check back here next Thursday for the next episode of Technically Awesome where we'll take a look at the perfect right hand technique. And in the meantime, maybe try out one of my riff in a minute videos and try applying what you've already learned today to a riff. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and let me know if there's any questions you guys have about technique. I'm keen to do a Q&A video at some point for you guys, so fire away in the comment section. But that's all for now guys, so until next time, go play, practice and then go play some more. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then click on one of these two videos to see what YouTube thinks you should watch next. Hey, they're both my videos. Good choice, YouTube.